بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه واتبع هداه أما بعد My dearest brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode and inshallah in today's episode we are going to be speaking about the role of a Muslim in the society that they are living in What is our role and responsibility towards society especially the plural society that we live in those of us who live in the United Kingdom, those of us who live in uh, the western part of the world, what is our role and responsibility in the society that we live in. As we proceed, brothers and sisters, inshallah, we're going to discover and really understand what is my role as a Muslim, what role and responsibility do I have in the society that I live in, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, we're going to identify those because it's absolutely fundamental that we identify them as a Muslim living in this plural society surrounded by people from all walks of life. There is a variation in language, variation in skin colour, variation in religion, variation in culture, so on and so forth. And those of us who are living in London, those of us who are living in the western parts of the world, uh, we live in a very multicultural uh, society. But me as a person of faith, a person who has submitted to Allah Jalla and a person who has surrendered and who is in a state of obedience to Allah, what is my role and responsibility? We are going to try and identify this ta'ala in today's episode. But before we have that discussion, I want to take uh, this moment to remind you all that how Allah Jalla from his favor and his mercy upon each one of us, he chose us to be Muslims. If he wanted, he could have chosen us to be people of any other faith. But he chose me and you and he handpicked me and you specifically to be amongst his servants. Brothers and sisters, take a moment and think about this. If we were to spend the rest of our lives just thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the fact that he chose me to be his, Mus uh, his servant, the fact that he chose me to be Muslim, we would not be able to thank him. If I was to go in sajda and just say alhamdulillah until my last breath, my brothers and sisters, I would not be able to do justice to the fact that Allah chose me to be his servant. Allahu Akbar. So we thank Allah Jalla wa ala. Alhamdulillah alladhi ja'alana muslimin. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah Jalla wa ala for choosing us to be Muslims. We have no contribution. Allah chose me specifically and he chose you spe specifically. Take a moment and think about that. While we are surrounded by people of other faith, people of other doctrines, people of other ideology, Allah chose me to be the follower of this pure religion, Al-Islam. This is from the favor of Allah Jalla wa ala. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah Jalla wa ala, he says, Alhamdulillah alladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. That it is not me who was, who, who, who has any contribution. I was not able to do this by myself, out of my own ability, it is Allah who guided me. Allahu Akbar. And if Allah wants, He can take away Islam from me. If I don't value it, if I don't cherish it, if I don't honor it, if I don't appreciate this religion that Allah has given to me, if Allah wants, He can take that away from you. And we have seen many people who were born in Muslim families, Many people who were born in Muslim families and they inherited Islam but unfortunately they did not depart with Al-Islam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says in the hadith كل مولود يولد على الفطرة فأبواه يهودانه وينصرانه ويمجسانه Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says every person is born with their natural uh, Position and the natural position is every person is born with Al Islam. 
the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then says فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ وَيُنَصِّرَانِهِ وَيُمَجِّسَانِهِ It may be that he's born in a family of people of other faith and because of their effects and the environment that person becomes the follower of another religion, another ideology, another doctrine. But we were fortunate that Allah chose us to be people who inherited Islam from our mothers and fathers. And those are brothers and sisters who accepted Islam and they came from different faiths. This is from the fadl of Allah Jalla wa ala. So we thank Allah Jalla wa ala for choosing us to be amongst his servants. This great bounty, the greatest of ni'mah in the life of this world, comes with a huge responsibility. This bounty, this blessing, this favor of Allah comes with a huge responsibility. And that responsibility, brothers and sisters, is that we share this beautiful religion with others. Wherever we may be, whatever part of the world we may reside in, it is our responsibility to share this beautiful information, this, this, this religion with others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه You are not a believer, you are not a believing man or woman until you love that for your fellow human being which you love for yourself. Brothers and sisters, this hadith is very indicative and it's a direct message to each one of us not to be self-centered, not to be selfish, not to be a person who believes in individualism, me, myself and I, because the society that we live in Unfortunately, a society that we live in, the society has become a society where all we do is think about ourselves. A very individualistic society, me, myself and I, not concerned about the welfare and the well-being of others. So this hadith says that you have to love for others which you love for yourself. Brothers and sisters, if you have tasted the sweetness of worshipping Allah, if you have tasted the sweetness of following the sunnah, of his Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we have to share that with others and this is the most important message that we share with others and this is how we can benefit others the society that we live in is not just about extending a hand so that you can help someone but the society that we live in where the population is approximately 67 million we are not the majority we are the minority approximately 5% of the overall population, we have a huge responsibility on our shoulder to give to the people something that is better for them, and that is Islam. Something that will save them from the severe punishment of the hereafter. Allah Jalla wa Ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, يَوْمَ تُقَلَّبُ وُجُوهُهُمْ فِي النَّارِ يَقُولُونَ يَا لَيْتَنَا أَطَعْنَ اللَّهَ وَأَطَعْنَ الرَّسُولَ Allah Jalla wa Ala says that they will be thrown into the fire on their faces, and they would say, if only, ya laytana, and this is a, a, a uh, expression of regret, if only we were obedient to Allah and we followed Allah and we followed the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So it's our responsibility to convey that message and this is how we can be the most beneficial to people in society. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, khayrun nasi man yanfa'un nas. The best amongst you is the one who is beneficial to others. This hadith is quite telling. This hadith, mashallah, is a beautiful hadith. It gives us direction. It gives us an important message. It tells us that if you want to be a good Muslim, and if you want to be loved in the eyes of Allah, you want the pleasure of Allah, then remember, you have to be kind to the creation. You have to be loving towards the creation. Allah created the creation to help the creation. Allah created the creation to worship the creator, but to help the creation. Whatever ability you have, whatever expertise you have, whatever knowledge that you have, you must use all of that to help other people. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ مَثَلُ النَّحْلَةِ لَا تَأْكُلُوا إِلَّا طَيِّبًا وَلَا تَضَعُوا إِلَّا طَيِّبًا The Prophet ﷺ says, the example of a believing man or woman is like the example of a bee. The Prophet ﷺ often would give these examples and he would compare the humans, his ummah, the creation of Allah, the children of Adam, to other things so that they understand. As the Arabic language experts, they say, with the examples, the matter becomes clear. The Prophet ﷺ gave these examples. Why? 
so that we really understand our role and responsibility, our identity, our purpose, our mission, our vision, so on and so forth. So the Prophet ﷺ compares the believers to a bee, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ مَثَلُ nahlati, Like a bee. What does the bee do? تَأْكُلُ طَيِّبًا وَتَضَعُ طَيِّبًا The bee is not like a fly. The fly sits on that which is sweet and the fly sits on that which is pure. But at the same time, the fly sits on that which is impure. The fly sits on that which is polluted. But the bee is very careful. The bee only consumes that which is pure. The bee would only go and sit on honey and that which is clean and pure. And what comes from the bee is also pure. What is produced from the bee is also pure. So Rasulullah compares you and I to the bumblebee, meaning that what comes from us is pure, what we consume is pure, what we give to others is pure. This hadith tells us, brothers and sisters, that the believing man and woman is not selfish. The believing man and woman is not a person who believes in individualism, but they are concerned about the welfare and the well-being of other people. And this was my beloved Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a person who was selfless. He didn't care about himself. He didn't care about his own well-being and welfare, but he was more concerned about others. He was more concerned about his family. He was more concerned about his companions. He was more concerned about the youth. He was more concerned about society. He was more concerned about the ummah. This is the mindset that each one of us need to really uh, adopt, brothers and sisters. And then we will be able to uh, be a benefit to society. Those of us who are living in the western part of the world, we are surrounded, as I said, by people from all walks of life. We have a huge responsibility amongst our responsibilities, brothers and sisters, to convey al-Islam and to be kind to others to be compassionate towards others to, and, and to be loving towards others. People of faith and people of no faith. People who have different ideologies, people who have different doctrines, people from different walks of life, regardless of their skin colour, language, culture, so on and so forth. Every human being should be treated with love and kindness and compassion. This is what Islam teaches us because every single person is the creation of Allah. Those of us living in this society, we are the minority, but we have a responsibility to portray the beauty of Al-Islam in our manners, in our dealings, in our code of conduct, in every aspect of our lives. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu addressing his companions upon occasion, he said, give da'wah without speaking. And they said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, how is this possible? How can we call people towards Islam with, uh, without any words, without uttering any words, without mentioning the verses of the Qur'an, without mentioning the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar radiallahu anhu says something very profound. He says, call people towards Islam with your manners, with your mannerism, with your code of conduct, with your morals, with your ethics, with you as a human being and all of the amazing characteristics and qualities that you have called people towards Islam with all of that. Brothers and sisters, having good manners, having good behavior, being kind and compassionate to others is an imperative tool in, in, in calling people towards Islam, especially living in a plural society surrounded by people from all walks of life, different faiths, so on and so forth, as we have repeated uh, many times or, already. Brothers and sisters, the Muslim is the one who is a benefit to others wherever they may be. They are always looking for opportunity to do khair. They are always looking for a reason so they can please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, it is not our deeds that will take us to Jannah. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressing his companions, he says, it is not our deeds that will take us to Jannah. And the companion says, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, what about you, O Messenger of Allah? And he says, Illa an yatagammadani Allahu bi rahmatihi. Except that Allah has mercy upon me and through his mercy I will attain Jannah. So remember, it's not just about the reward that will take us to Jannah. It is the pleasure of Allah jalla wa ala. When we are serving others, meaning helping them, aiding them, assisting them. This is where the pleasure of Allah Jalla is. When you are merciful to others, irhamu man fil ardi, irhamukum man fil sama, Allah Jalla On the tongue of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, 
Allah Jalla enabled the Messenger Sallallahu to say this statement Be merciful to those on earth and Allah Jalla will be merciful to you Allahu Akbar Brothers and sisters there are so many amazing incidents from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam and the best of people the companions Radwanullahi Alaihim Ajma'in how they weren't thinking about themselves but they were thinking about the society that they lived in helping others putting themselves at a side, becoming selfless to help others. There are so many incidents. One incident that really uh, amazes me and takes me back is the incident of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Brothers and sisters, many of you know that Uthman radiallahu anhu, till this day, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has an account in his name. If you go to the Mamlaka, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, he has an account in his name where he is accumulating a lot of wealth. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he was the one who bought a water well for the Muslims. The Muslims didn't have water. Uthman radiallahu anhu was amongst the richest of companions. Imam ibn al-Qayyim says he gave the highest amount of money to the Prophet to aid al-Islam. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he was very wealthy, very rich. But he lived a life of simplicity. He wasn't a person who wasn't conscious about others but he was a selfless person thinking about others when he found out that the muslims could not drink water from Bi'ruma, what did he do he purchased that and he gave that to the muslims and then the garden that he has left behind where there are trees that are being grown and dates are being produced and other things that are being produced all of that is being sold and the money is being spent in charity and the money is going into the account of uthman ibn affan the great companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam. Brothers and sisters, the society that we live in, we have neighbors on the right, neighbors on the left. We have neighbors in front of us, neighbors behind us. It is our responsibility to be kind to them, be loving towards them, so that we can really showcase the beauty of Al-Islam. This is the purpose. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith, Al-Mu'minu ya'lafu wa yu'lafu wa la khayra fi man la ya'lafu wa la yu'lafu. The Prophet ﷺ says, the believer is the one who is loved and he is loving. The believer is the one who is caring and he cares for others. The believer is the one who is affectionate and people find them approachable, loving, caring, so on and so forth. So when it comes to our relationship with our neighbors, we really need to display role model behavior, role model characteristics. Bismillah ta'ala. May Allah Jalla wa'ala give us the tawfiq to really understand our role and responsibility in society, especially that we are living in a society where we are surrounded by people from so many other faiths and no faiths. We have to really display role model qualities, role model characteristics, so that people are impressed with our behavior, impressed with our code of conduct, and ultimately this puts a seed in their heart for them to think about this beautiful religion, Al-Islam, the religion of Tawheed, the religion uh, that is pure, the religion that is free from uh, pollution, the religion that will be the salvation for each one of us in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters, in this very society that we live in, one of the most developed countries in the world, the United Kingdom. England is one of the most developed and richest country in the world. But when we step outside of our door, there are many homeless people, there are many people who are struggling to get jobs, there are many people who are struggling to make ends meet, there are single mothers, there are fathers who are looking after their children who, who don't have support. People like that are in desperate need of our support. So let us reach out to them, help all of those people. And this is how we will be able to better society. When we give back to society, when we become selfless and we think about others, you see this ripple effect will take place. Behavior breeds behavior. If you're kind to someone, then that person will express the kindness to another person and that person will express the kindness to another person and you see the effects will continue and this is how we make this society a beautiful society and this is how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he thought about society and he was a visionary he was thinking about how to build a stable prosperous secure society and this is our plan brothers and sisters that we convey the message of al-islam we benefit other people financially, physically, with our knowledge, with our expertise, help other people be in ta'ala. And this is what is expected from us. And don't forget that while you are doing all of this, 
you are increasing your bank balance you are increasing your account you are attaining the pleasure of Allah on the day of Hisab when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your books are given to you and when you open your books you find that I helped this person on that day I supported that person on that day sincerely and I was a benefit to society I was thinking about other people I was thinking about the environment I was thinking about my neighbors I was thinking about homeless people I was thinking about uh, the poor children in different parts of the world, in Yemen, in Syria, in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Somalia, different parts of the world, you became very conscious and impatient. Why? Because you're, you want to do something for the ummah, your heart's crying. This is what Allah wants to see. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila ajsamikum wa la ila suwarikum walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum aw kama qala alayhi salatu wassalam that Allah jalla wa'ala doesn't look at your external state what he wants to see is a pure heart what this heart seeks what this heart desires brothers and sisters let us have a pure clean heart a heart that wants to please Allah a heart that is soft towards others kind towards others and this is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was as the Quran mentions فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ Our beloved Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a man who was very soft, very kind, very compassionate, very loving towards others we have lost this side of the sunnah that we dress like him, we speak like him but do we behave like him, especially in the society that we live in? Let us be kind towards others. Let us be loving towards others. Let us show concern towards others. And let us remove this concept of individualism, me, myself and I. And when we think, let us think collectively that we are one ummah, we are one body. May Allah Jalla wa ala give us the tawfiq to really adhere to everything that we have heard. May Allah give us the tawfiq to employ everything that we have heard. May Allah protect you all, preserve you all. And inshallah, I hope to see you in our next program. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.